individual segmented chunks, like you're writing for teachers and potential entrepreneurs. But what I liked about your piece, and I, I kind of noticed this across several pieces, I was specifically looking at the art of the essay though, um, was like, I think you kind of speak, speak to like the, the multiplicity of like audiences that are in like one person. Like you're, you're like, there are teachers who all who have identities outside of, you know, being an educator. Um, and I think that you kind of speak to that. And I think that that idea of like, what is a, what does an audience look like when we are thinking about people in these like individual categories? Like my audience is teachers, but you're thinking about like creative professionals, like, which includes being a teacher, but also an entrepreneur. So I liked how you kind of were playing with that. And like, you know, considering you have this whole work going, it speaks to your identity too, that you see yourself as like more than just like a, like a, you know, a teacher in a classroom You are like a creative professional. So I thought that was, that was cool. It kind of expanded the way that I'm thinking about audience. Yeah, and Sam, what conceptions of audience do you, do I think you have by reading this? Sometimes I think it's also geared for your students too, um, you know, because like uh, you, there was another post about teens, uh, you know, ideas for side hustles for teens, um, and sometimes I don't know. It seems like your writing is um, it's it's ready for your students to get into too, just so they understand your process. And your goals. The smorgasbord. <laughs> I'll pick up on something that Trevor just said. Um, I got stuck on one post because I ran out of free medium posts and right. I click back and forth and I don't know what I'll run out of. So I'm on the, um, you know, uh, poems for hustlers. And I, I think what's important about this one so first again picking up what trevor said like you, you directly name you know as an educator and then in business and when we think of your profile and we see that you're a teacherpreneur and a consultant and then you've had workforce and education industry like you don't necessarily call it dear teacher but i mean that's a it's pretty clear that you name those audiences there and then what's also interesting, speaking to audience, and this is probably somewhat to context, obviously you wrote this within National Poetry Month, you were hearkening directly to National Poetry Month, you included the words of other poets in there, and giving credit to those poets, and then and linking out to some of the types of things that you've done, like your poetry cafe. So you were trying to maybe encompass someone that might have caught your post in social media and said, oh, I want to look at this because it's got poetry, or I want to look at this because it's got a lesson plan, or I want to look at this because it can give me some kind of insight into being a better uh, facilitator or business uh, person or entrepreneur or something like that. So I thought that was really skillful to meet the needs of multiple audiences and then also to provide them all with resources and other things that they could lead away from your piece of digital writing to go out into the digital world further and continue their explorations. So those are a few things I noticed. Yeah, that's, that's all interesting. And Troy, something else that you got me thinking about too is like when it comes to audience in like the digital world, it's also the medium through which you're like sending those messages out. Right, like like the link, the vibe of like a LinkedIn post uh, is a certain audience versus the vibe of a Twitter post versus on Medium itself. And even if you know one person has access to all those platforms, they kind of show up in a different way in that space. So I I do kind of like that idea of um, you know you're keeping in mind the fact that in this digital format, people are accessing your work from different you know online mediums. So like the audience isn't just like thinking about the people, but also thinking about how people are showing up in the digital space where they're going to access your work, right? And having that kind of like blended discourse, I think is really cool. And it allows people to find interest or find a hook regardless of where their entry point is, which I, which I think is, is cool. All right, I'm going to inter interrupt you guys. Um, Sam, can mm -hmm. you be ready to read the IRS piece? Yeah. For us, okay, um, and let's all come back to the large group if you don't mind. Um, and to hear.
to geek out right now before Sam gets back so I can think of how to say it. Thank you. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, so thinking about this idea of interactivity, um, audience interactivity. Um, so maybe the most pertinent example is right at the end. Like we can also hope the IRS commissioner and lawmakers read your powerful book. Um, I listen to NPR and I still don't know who the IRS commissioner is. <laughs> a link right there to like actually contact the IRS. Yeah. Or the lawmaker, look up your lawmaker. Um, and even, I mean, to extend that even further, like a little blip of his piece, like with a little pop up that's like, oh, dear congressperson so and so you might be interested in this book from so-and-so and I would greatly encourage you to read it and have a further conversation or something like that. So I was just thinking like, yes, I mean, the letter itself is appealing. It's obviously, you know, he has a strong voice. It's, you know, touching on the major points of what you would expect in a book review, even though it's written as a letter to the author. So there's lots of really creative things that are done, but I don't know that he fully took advantage of the no pun intended, took advantage of the medium. So. Yeah. yeah, I guess I was also curious about, you know, it's it's a direct address to the author too, and maybe you were mentioning that before I got here, but I was wondering if the author has read it. And so again, it's a similar kind of thing that Troy's talking about is, is there a way to alert the author that Sam has written a, a letter to the author? Because I'd be interested if the author has responded or or if there are better ways to try to get that author to respond. Yeah, it, Troy, the way that you were talking about that interactivity piece may kind of, it might sound like a tangent, but it reminds me a lot of John Oliver and how he's kind of like, um, if you if you follow a show, a lot of what he does is like bringing the audience in to sort of like community of, I don't know, like uh, activists or participants. And it's not just like get angry about this. It's like click on this link, go to this hashtag. So I, I really like that idea of, that interactivity and like giving it helping them feel something and then giving them like an outlet through which they can direct their act their passion and act on their thoughts and feelings so i, I definitely dig that and then at another level just wondering i don't know maybe I'm, maybe i should be over in the mode and meaning group right now i don't know but i i think the other advantage here and again knowing that all of us are busy and as writers are especially busy and as educators are especially busy. So sometimes you just want to write something and put it out in the world. But I'm also wondering like, Oh my gosh, like how many, even just the, just the words themselves could be hyperlinked to something as simple as like, you know, the Oxford English dictionary definition of, you know, institutional racism or, um, or maybe what was the other one that he used? Uh, police brutality and educational inequity. Like some other really brilliant people have probably written about that, or there's probably a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to stopping police brutality. So maybe, uh, you know, kind of having those types of things as a call to action. Again, knowing limited time, limited bandwidth, limited space, you put too many links in, people link out everywhere, they don't come back and read your things. So there's that too. But I just, I, I wonder if he's got a lot going on in there, you know, redlining or, you know, something like that. there's, there's interactive Google maps where you can like look at redlining yeah. and the, the effects over decades. Right. So how cool would that be? Well, and cool in the sense that it gives the reader something more to do, not cool that redlining happened. Don't hear me wrong. But the idea that here's a link to go find out more and to experience something more. Yeah, and, and I think that like that's, I mean, this is, I guess, kind of like a little bit more of a mo mode or medium conversation, but it speaks to like the affordances of having a hyperlinked interconnected kind of like web that you can do because you don't have to go into an insane amount of depth and turn what is meant to be like kind of like a quick medium post into this giant like dissertation because you can embed that hyperlink in there as a way to like bring in prior knowledge that people might not have. Um, and, and maybe, and I think that that could overlap with audience because whether or not you are someone who's very familiar and well versed in these ideas or not, having those hyperlinks, I think, could you know bring everybody to the same level of knowledge and access to the ideas, um, you know, even if they weren't familiar with a term like redlining. I just happen to be a fan of Sam's work and clicked on it.
Do you guys have a question for Sam? Should we come back to you in a minute? Not 100% necessary. I mean, we got to talk to him in the first round. Yeah, so. he's in okay. okay, so he, yeah, he's, he's busy with the other groups. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have to say, I, I was not familiar with the book. And so, um, nor, I guess, the concepts. I, get, I wasn't surprised. But um, I thought, I was wondering what Sam thinks about, just without the interactivity pieces that we were talking about, just who he thought might be reading this um that was one thought i had was well and i, I think we probably all wear similar political stripes so i don't think i'm going to speak too far out of uh, out of class here um who he's not talking to or at least who he's kind of back talking to is like the ben shapiro's of the world right like yeah i i'm seeing like in a way, he's kind of taking just that kind of casual conversational, of course, of course, and can't you see this? And can't you, like, not calling him like a TikToker or a vlogger or something here. I think he's taking a slightly different approach, but just in the sense of kind of that modern, you know, discourse around politics and highly contentious topics. And well, of course, and there, there's kind of a, there's a slow build here, right? And there, and fortunately, he's on the side of progressivism um, and doing that. But I, I it, it doesn't get angry. It doesn't, it doesn't, you know, move into like that furious, fiery kind of political discourse. But it certainly continues to give you things to think about. And so, yeah, he's not, he's not trying to just simply pour gas on the fire. He's, yeah. he's trying to engage in some kind of civil dialogue. Um, so he's, so again. His, his imagined audience probably does not include that kind of discourse um, for what that's worth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I, I'd be curious how much of his experiences in the classroom has informed his ability to diplomatically build and inform those points. I feel like that's something that any teacher with more progressive views, but maybe with a politically or ideologically or culturally diverse student body is adept in like figuring out and negotiating within themselves you know how can I not pour gasoline onto this class conversation that we're having while still making sure that I'm advocating for you know marginalized students in a way where they feel safe and protected in that environment um, and I, I have found with students in my class that approach gets way more buy-in from students who might be politically different than me than if I were to go in you know sort of metaphorically guns blazing and just kind of be like, here's why you're wrong. Here's why you should think this. So I think that, that, I don't know, that is an extra benefit to his approach. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we are, we want to have the interconnected conversation now. So please come to the large group.